Well, good morning. Happy Thursday. Great to be up, although it's a bit of an early morning, a cold morning at that. Boy, yesterday it was freezing. Uh, but today is also a, a cool morning. Uh, maybe I'll be walking the dogs in a little bit. I'm not really sure. I uh, hope you're staying warm and safe uh, as it was beautiful yesterday, despite forgive me, the cold weather. Oh. Uh, it's at church, boy, the sun was out, the parking lot was dry, and it was just gorgeous. Um, today's devotion, I'm going to get to this before I get to, I'll get yawning again, uh, is one I want to share on our epistle lesson coming up this next week. It's a challenging lesson. That's why I want to share it. We dealt with it a lot yesterday in our, uh, in our um, Bible class on, on uh, the lectionary, and I thought I'd be going to focus on. The devotion I share with you comes from, of course, Lutheran Ministries. It's one that I like to do a lot. And it's called What Matters Most. The text is from 1 Corinthians 7. Now, this might seem kind of out of place. You have to read the whole chapter of 7 if you're really curious about how it uh, is, is put in its context. But these verses will help give us some uh, perspective. Paul writes, This is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives live as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no goods, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, and how, sorry, about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. And the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord and how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. And I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. Here ends the word of the Lord. So Paul's purpose is very simple, to keep good order, and to secure an undivided devotion for the Lord. Now, why does he put it this way? Well, because we're challenged by lots of things in our lives, lots of things that vie for our attention. Those can be very good and holy things, or they can be things that maybe aren't as good and holy. Well, let's look at the first one, the good and holy things. Or they, consider this idea here. Have you ever played the game where you imagine the three things you would grab in your house if it was on fire? The three things that were most important to you that you'd want to save forces you to focus on what's really important. I mean, no time to deal with a, you know, dirty dishes or I need to grab, but it's more so I need to grab my baby pictures. We can't replace, we can replace the plates, but I want grandma's casserole dish. And for goodness sake, take the dog. I mean, dogs are always up there and most important, right? Now it's hard to play that game on a daily basis. It's easy to just do it hypothetically. But to sort through the mountain of errands and concerns and busy work to try to figure out what truly matters. What is the one thing that God wants me to be doing today? And yet, that's part of our mandate as Christians, isn't it? Figuring out what Jesus wants us to do. So our one precious life here on earth gets used for his glory as effectively as possible. And I think Jesus must have done much of the same thing, given the fact that he would only be with us for on earth about 33 years. And that's really a short time to do all that he wanted to do, to teach, to preach, to heal, to convert, and best of all, to save us from the power of evil through his death and resurrection. Such an urgent mission didn't leave him much time for a lot of extras. Now, obviously, he never married or he never had any kids, and he arranged his life so that he could be free as possible to do what God wanted him to do. What then is God asking from you and from me? That's going to be between each of us and the Holy Spirit, of course, to figure out. And there's many ways. As I talked with one person yesterday, there's a list of inventory of spiritual gifts. You can determine your spiritual gifts and how the Lord desires you to live out your life today. Now, in my case, it involves being married, raising three kids, caring for our congregation at Galilee, as well as uh, sharing these morning devotions with you and uh, maintain a house and our two dogs, and the list can go on and on. But when it gets down to those top three things, well, the Lord and his work for me to do needs to always be first. Now, in your case, what might it be?
Think about that today. Maybe that's something you pray about. Lord, what would you have me doing today? What is the most important thing I need to be focused on in my life? And know this, whatever it is, God will guide you. And you can do it with gladness, knowing that it helps more and more people to hear about Jesus because he is the one who matters most of all. And his gift of salvation is what then becomes the most important thing for all people to hear, to receive, and to live. So as you consider this day, maybe this moment, maybe say a, a prayer and ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me do today to your glory and in service for my neighbor? Well, that's a great way to start the morning, right? Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Dear Savior, set my heart and my eyes on you so that I do the really important things, the ones that make the difference for you and for your church. Bless me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this is a little bit short devotion, but uh, I encourage you to get out there, uh, live what God has called you to do, and if you need to, reflect on it a little bit. Maybe spend the rest of this devotion time this morning just praying to the Lord and asking for him to be with you, to focus you, to refine you, to give your vision for what he would desire you to be about today and each day. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Know that I love you and aloha.